So basically, this vision model is smart enough to actually remotely control this phone screen um, using ADB and Omniparser, which is awesome. There's a new NVIDIA Llama Nemotron out, but this is a vision model which are less common than their generic non-vision model counterparts, I suppose you could say. So I am quite interested in testing this. It is a cool little model. It is based off of Llama 3.18B. However, there is also a actually something that I have not seen before. So if we just kind of jump into it right here, it has a vision encoder called C-Radio V2-H, which truthfully I am not very familiar with and if you actually google search it to try to familiarize yourself with it so that you don't look like a moron when you're actually filming the video here you will find that there's just not a whole lot about this online so it is kind of unique it does seem a little interesting and then of course the language model that this is actually just based off of is llama 3.18b instruct so this model is quite interesting obviously for a company like nvidia making a model they're going to really be talking about a lot of business use cases for it here so the tech blog really kind of just goes over that where they say it ranks very high on OCR Bench V2. They have a chart here talking about how well it does. And then if we scroll down, we kind of see some of the examples that they mention this being good at, which are all pretty much business use cases like invoice and receipt processing, customer service, scientific and tech document processing, etc. The cool thing about this is it is on Hugging Face, which we can see right here. From the model card, they do tell you a little bit about it. Now, truthfully, it is not simple to run this model if you are used to just using something like Olama or LM Studio. So I will quickly touch upon how I got this running on my machine, and we will also talk about actually like the system requirements to run this. Now, something I do want to mention that I find interesting, and I don't know if I will actually be able to test this just due to VRAM constraints, but this actually can supposedly take video as an input as well, which is quite interesting, and I don't see any research paper or anything right here, so I'm not 100% sure how it would actually go about parsing the video, but it is cool to see a model that can actually take video as well, as that is definitely even rarer than just having a standard vision model. Very cool, they do actually talk about the size of the images that it can take. So it is determined by a 12 tile layout constraint with each tile being 512 by 512 pixels. And uh, assuming my memory is not letting me down in some of the papers I've read and things like that, the kind of way that models look at images now is they tile them out into segments so they can get more finite detail and look at specific parts of an image to do a better job in actually understanding it. So that's basically what this does is it would intake a large image and then kind of look at it in tiles as opposed to as one whole image how perhaps you and I would. With that, I suppose we're basically going to go ahead and just start playing with it. Like I said, I do want to mention how I actually got this running. So truth be told, it's just kind of like a quote unquote vibe coded script that allows this to work in a simple Gradio interface. Beyond that, it's not really too difficult to get the requirements and things like that running. So I will post this on GitHub just under a gist, which you can think of as like a sticky note script to run something. It's not a full repository. And I do actually have it open right here on the web browser running on my localhost and we can see if we look in nvidia smi real quick before we get started this is running on a 5090 laptop gpu which has 24 gigs of vram and it is currently using around 18.41 so it is a heavy model in terms of vram requirements now I tried this with IBM, one of their granite small vision models, and it was a very tiny vision model, so it didn't quite understand it, but I am just going to send it this meme to ask if it understands this meme and if it could explain said meme to me. And we'll just go ahead and we'll get a little bit of kind of a reference of how long this actually takes to go ahead. And right there, just doing this, the generation jumped up to like 22 and a half gigabytes of video RAM. so. This meme references the Microsoft Word feature that moves images around when you try to insert them into a document. It humorously compares this feature to Homer Simpson's chaotic attempt to move furniture around in his house. Not exactly, but truthfully, it actually did acceptably, I would say, in comparison to my sample size of one previously where um, a tiny vision model didn't quite get it. So with that... <laughs> um, Okay, so this is the chart from the actual tech blog article from it right here. Now, instead of just asking it like something boring and business-like where like, can you please tell me what this chart entails? I want to ask it to give a scathing review of this chart and then we'll see <laughs> what it says. 
All right, then let's go ahead and see if we do get a scathing critique of said chart. This chart is, <laughs> okay, so it did. Oh, you know, oh, I am zoomed in. Okay, this text is just tiny. This chart is overly complex and difficult to interpret. Circular layout is visually cluttered and confusing. I would say, I'm just, I'm not going to read this, like, fully repeated on camera, but it lacks clear and concise tile or heading that explains its purpose. Text is too small. Overall, the chart is poorly designed and does not effectively communicate its intended message. I don't know why, but I find it humorous to kind of have the models critique the charts that go alongside any technical documentation accompanying said model. Uh, that's probably a very niche thing to find funny. With that, <laughs> now this, it is just a photo of, I think it's a number pad for a very old Apple computer, obviously, but I want to ask it to transcribe the text right here because there are actually like some shadows with the way the lighting was in this photo that may actually complicate this. So while this may look like a stupid test first and foremost, I do actually want to see how it does with text that is somewhat similar to the background color accentuated by some shadows. And we'll see how that goes. Obviously, the specific time it takes to respond depends on how much text it's generating and things of that sort. Oh no, it did. It totally did. It did a very good job. And the text right here is what I was interested in. I'm going to actually go ahead and just check this FCC ID. Yep. And the serial number. I would assume that to be correct. I think that's a D. I don't know. That's a tough one. All right. That's actually not bad. And again, simple, but I wanted to just see how it did on this text because it was very similar in color to the actual color of the item said text was placed on. With that... <laughs> All right, so we'll try something serious. I just took this sample bank statement right here from some website. This is obviously not a real bank statement. And I will just ask it to go ahead and do something perhaps business related, such as extract the information from this document. All right, <laughs> I am probably not going to cross-reference all of these. I will just check perhaps a few main things. It did do them in a somewhat organized result, I suppose, where it kind of just put everything on one line as to not clutter with a paragraph result. I think the last thing I'm going to do is basically just show it this picture of myself with my robots at uh, a show, and then I will ask it to explain what's funny about this meme, knowing that it's not a meme. That's interesting. So it totally kind of ignored it didn't answer what's funny about this meme at all because it wasn't a meme and it just properly kind of analyzed the image. I will say it did a pretty good job. It's likely from a convention or event where technology is being showcased for holographic heads. That kind of works. A red sign with the word connect on it and a yellow curtain. Where's, oh, yeah, that's actually pretty good. So that's up there in the corner. And that's kind of that tiling thing we saw referenced in the Hugging Face model card it kind of helps the models pick up on things like that that may be otherwise like out there in the actual focus of the image. So overall, not bad. Now, truthfully, because I think testing like this can get kind of mundane and is not necessarily a very good way to check the model's result, I am going to actually go ahead and test this using the Android phone agent I made, which uses Microsoft's OmniParser to take a screenshot, draw bounding boxes on the screen, and then just put ID labels and things like that. And then this model will actually see that screenshot and then produce a result of what it should click on on the phone in order to drive a specific action denoted by the user. That will probably make more sense when we jump into it now. <laughs> so now for a more, I suppose, intricate test. Essentially what's going on here is this Android phone is hooked up to the PC behind me because this would require more VRAM than I have available on this laptop. And now what we're going to do is just basically take this phone use agent repository that I made a while back that would autonomously control this phone using ADB and a vision language model and OmniParser. And we are going to go ahead and run the script. So basically there is going to be a lot of messy terminal output right here, which I do apologize for, but I'm not touching the phone and we will see now that 
it did just go ahead and actually open up Chrome. I don't know how well you can see that or if it showed or not. So basically what's going on now is this vision model is actually working to control this phone. Now, unfortunately, this repository is a bit experimental because it does not do very well when it has to enter text. Oh, it actually did just do weather New York. If it presses enter right now, I will be actually happy because this will be a rather successful test in the scheme of this repository. Um, it seems to perhaps be getting a little confused, but if we turn our attention back to the laptop screen real quick, this actually is using this vision model to not only parse the visual info on the phone screen, but it is actually also returning strictly formatted JSON instructions on the element ID to select the name of the element and the actual action from a list of actions that it's given. So it is now kind of just spam copy pasting weather New York, weather New York, <laughs> weather New York into the Google search bar on the internet browser. And it will try it 10 times before it's just like, okay, it completed. So obviously this is an experimental repository and things like that. And it just pasted in weather New York again, <laughs> but it does work somewhat well. Well, Again, the model, this is more of an intricate way to test a vision model because not only does it have to go ahead and actually correctly identify things on screen with the help of OmniParser, but its intelligence needs to come into play in actually outputting correctly formatted JSON responses and things like that, which actually drive the ADB commands that are autonomously interacting with the phone screen. So basically, this vision model is smart enough to actually remotely control this phone screen I'm um, using ADB and OmniParser, which is awesome. So we will just try this one more time, except I've instructed it to open the phone and dial 555. So I'm trying to, okay, it has opened the phone. All right, so it does seem kind of confused, but it did manage to actually open and identify the phone app by itself, which is good because there's nothing on the screen here on the phone that actually says phone. So that's again, just kind of another way to test the ability of these vision models. And as it gets closer to step 10 there back on the laptop screen, it will likely just stop doing anything, but I won't have to worry about it actually dialing one of these spam numbers. I really hope that light isn't just reflecting the phone screen. <laughs> because that would kind of have ruined this test. And I will just go ahead and kind of close out of that. Oh, now it swiped up on the screen. Jagex RuneScape layoffs? I hope not. Sorry, that was, okay, so <laughs> it, that, it swiped up, so it gave me like the stupid suggested news stories, which they try to shove down our throats. Now with that, <laughs> that is really going to probably conclude this video. I just wanted to do a testing of this new Nemotron vision model that is good for OCR, but in a way that kind of is more fitting of my style of testing, which is not 100% focused on academic business use cases, but fun use cases as well. So overall, it's cool to have another vision model in the vision model space. And with that, it is going to conclude this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and thanks for watching.